Hello, this is a short training video that will demonstrate how to install and configure WISE Device Manager. During the training video, we'll cover how to install WDM 5.0 Workgroup Edition. Then we will issue some basic WDM commands to a West 7 Thin client. Next, we'll push a WISE factory image to a West 7 Thin client. Lastly, we'll push a configuration to a Dell WISE P25 Thin client. For the purposes of this demonstration, I created a WDM workgroup installation checklist, which we will be going through. The first step in the checklist to install WDM is to get the actual WDM software. To do this, I'm going to create an RDP connection and log on to the server which I plan to install WDM on. Once I'm there, I'm going to go ahead and go out to the WISE website and under product downloads, under active products, I will select WISE device manager. Once I've selected WISE Device Manager, I can select the file. It'll ask me to fill out some basic information and then click Agree, and then I can begin to save the file. Now I've completed step one on my checklist, which is to get the WDM software. The next step is I need to get this server, which I already have, which can be a 2008 R2 server. 2012 server with or without R2. I need to join that server to the domain, get an administrative password, enable remote desktop if I want to remotely connect to it. I do recommend that you use a virtual machine and you take a snapshot before beginning the installation. Another thing is we recommend that you dedicate the server for the purposes of WDM. The next step we are going to create a DNS host a record for WDM server that way, the devices will be able to look for the host A record and immediately discover the WDM server and begin to check in. So now I've actually logged into the server running DNS on my environment, and I go ahead and create a record for WDM server and put in the IP address of my WDM server, the server that I'm going to install WDM on in the next step. So you can see here now I've got the host A record for WDM server, and that matches the 192.168.0.207, uh, which is a server I'm going to install WDM. The next thing on the checklist is to create an SRV record. This is used only if I plan to manage, be managing hardware zero clients that are running the Teradici chip or the ThreadX firmware. Uh, this would be the WISE P20, P25, or P45. You can see here I just create a service record of underscore PCOIP dash tool. I put the protocol as underscore TCP. The port number I will use is 50,000. And again, for the host offering of the service, I will put in the fully qualified domain name of my WDM server. Once I'm done there, I can click OK, OK and that SRV record is created. So now I've got the software, I've created my host A record, and you can see here, I've created the SRV record. So now I'm actually ready to begin the installation. So on the demo server that I'm going to use, my WDM server, I'm going to uh, click on the extractor and begin the extra extraction and installation of the WDM software. It'll take a few minutes to go through. Uh, note, if you're actually performing an install, it may take a little bit longer than what you're seeing on here. Uh, because uh, for purposes of the training video, some of the installation screens have actually been sped up so that uh, you don't have to, to wait the entire time. Uh, but you should see accurately all the steps. So again, the first step there is click on Next. You select your license type. In this case, we're going to just do a workgroup install. That way, the license will not expire and you'll be able to use it. With workgroup, uh, we're going to install all five of those components seen on the same virtual machine. Um, the next thing is we are going to create a uh, rapport user account. Make sure that if your server requires complex passwords, it use a complex password for the rapport account. After that's completed, uh, we're going to configure the software repository. 
In this case, uh, HTTPS is configured by default. We're going to select FTP, which is a requirement for managing the Teradici devices. Uh, and now we are actually for the local user account. Again, make sure you have a complex password here for the local rapport account. Um, so this is the services we wish to install. We actually need to install the DHCP proxy. And in this case, we'll do the ThreadX server, which will give us the option of managing those devices. Select the default installation path and the components to install. We'll go ahead and click next and begin the installation process. And you can see it's going to be pretty straightforward uh, from here on after we made those choices with the rest of the installation. Um, you'll see it do uh, any prerequisites that are required and then all the components uh, should begin to install without any further user interaction. Once it's done, you'll be able to see the installation is complete on the video and now let's go back to our checklist and uh, go ahead and it did want to restart so we'll go ahead and let the system restart and you can see we've been through our checklist we got the WDM software we got the required uh, unit created the the DNS information and installed the software uh, now on the right half of the screen I've actually brought up a Windows embedded 7 client um, so you can kind of see how that would interact with my wise device manager server uh, that server was online prior to this system actually being installed and configured. So um, I just want to show you once you log in, um, it is just showing me that the server needs to be activated. It's not going to expire, but it does need to be activated under licensing. Notice my uh, D90 D7, my West 7 thin client, is not available in Device Manager. Again, because I said it was actually brought online before installing Wise Device Manager. So now that I have the proper uh, host a record configured if I reboot the client it should show up uh, as an available device under device manager so I'll just take a minute while my uh, West 7 which is on the right half of your screen right now uh, device goes ahead and reboots up and I kind of just click around here to refresh uh, my MMC interface for WDM and there it is there is my Windows embedded 7 thin client that's available so now that the device is there, I can actually right click on it and you can see a, a various a list of uh, commands that I can do to the device. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, remote shadow. You can see it's actually doing a VNC. So uh, the left hand screen is VNC controlling the, the right half of the screen. Uh, if I go back and look at the other types of commands, you can see a lot of different things that I can do uh, directly in real time commands to that Windows 7. I'll go ahead and execute a command. So I'll just type in notepad and you can see when it's executed from WDM pretty much instantaneously executes that command uh, on my Windows 7 embedded device. So go back one more time to, to look at the commands available, the real time commands, and we'll go ahead and uh, do a reboot. Uh, if I can find that in the list here. Okay, reboot. And you should see that uh, pretty, pretty uh, quickly the Windows Embedded 7 device on the right hand screen will begin the reboot process. So those are the, some of the list of the basic real-time commands that I can do now that my device is actually being uh, managed by WDM. Let's go ahead and push a wise factory image. So to do that on my WDM server I'm actually going back out to the uh, the wise.com forward slash download site and from inside of here, I'm going to select the product that I want to push an image to. Now again, in this case, I'm pushing a Windows Embedded 7 to a D90 D7. I'll select that and find the latest firmware. Uh, notice that uh, do not assume that English is going to be the first in the list. In this case, the actual the latest English version of the image is a little bit farther down the list. And now, uh, once I agree to the terms, I can go ahead and begin the software download of this file. It is the image uh, for this is quite large so um, I'm gonna wait for the, the device on the right which I sent the real-time reboot command. Uh, once that comes up I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause the video and then let the, uh, the rest of this image download and then I'll extract it. You can see now it's actually extracted. Um, it extracted into a folder for the device and I'm going to go to Wise Device Manager, uh, open it back up and now under Package Manage I can select New Package and register from an RSP file and I can actually browse to the location where I 
extracted the file that I had downloaded in the step previously. So again, it's a D90 D7 and go ahead and click on next. And again, it'll, it may take it several minutes. Uh, well, it actually copies over this large image file into the software repository on my WISE device manager server. Uh, once it's done, it'll say finished. I can, or I can click on finish. And now under images, I can see the new image, which I just downloaded to the system. I simply just click on the image and the easiest way to deploy it is drag it over to device manager and collect, select the device that I want to image. Uh, select that device, move it to the right and then click on next. I can choose if I want to do it now or at a certain time. I'll just use now and I'm going to use a non pixie image. Um, so once I select that, you can see the device again on the right communication it gets a message pretty quick saying that it has an update pending I could wait I'm gonna go ahead and click on the device and click on update now which will cause my Windows embedded thin client to reboot and again because I selected non pixie imaging uh, it will make the service partition on the device active it'll boot into that and contact the WDM server and then begin to image the primary partition so um, blow up here the screen uh, for the Windows embedded thin client you can see it's actually contacted that and it begins to download the software. Again, note, uh, I did speed up the process uh, in the recording. Um, the actual image, when you're pushing an image, I would expect it to take 10 to 15 minutes to re-image a normal Windows Embedded 7 thin client. Uh, in this case, you're going to see through time lapse uh, the image being pushed in you know, 10 to 20, 20 to 30 seconds. Um, so now you can, if you look back at WDM, you can see the Im image installation is in progress. Uh, it's pretty much completed on the device. It's rebooting and you can see now it's going to begin the, uh, the normal settings that Windows would on its first boot up because I've actually put this device again back to its normal. Now I'm actually going to switch over my KVM to a P25 device and then when I click inside of Weiss Device Manager. Um, I should actually see that device and now I'm going to change some settings with a basic configuration. I'm going to put the IP address of a uh, Horizon View Manager server I have in my environment that uh, 192.680.205. I'm going to set SSL to 1 and kiosk mode to 0. One of the neat things about the configurations for view, they're real time. So when I push it, you can actually see it's going to show up immediately on the right screen. So I'm going to say now and almost instantaneously watch how this happens it switches right away and now my p25 device is available I just click on connect and because I do have a view server available I'll go ahead and put some user credentials so you can just kind of see with a basic setting I'm going to connect to a Windows 7 desktop pool and now I'm connecting from that wise p25 device into a Windows 7 desktop if I go back over to the device you can see if I right click you can see commands that I have available to my P25 thin client and you can actually see that I have some um, device configuration that I can do to this device directly from WISE Device Manager. So thank you for watching this uh, demonstration of how to install WISE Device Manager 5.0 Workgroup Edition. I hope you found it useful.